Have you ever wondered why do games and movie special effects actually use meshes and triangles but ray tracers use spheres? Hi, I'm Arun. This is the third part of our Make Your Own Ray Tracer in Python tutorial series. In the last few parts, we covered how we can play with vectors and how we can generate images. Whereas in this part, we are actually going to render an image. That's right, we are going to render a 3D scene. You might be wondering what is in that scene. But before that, if you have watched behind the scenes of games and movies special effects, then you must have noticed that they are all made up of meshes, which are essentially triangles. Why triangles, you might wonder. The simple reason is that a triangle is defined by three points in a three-dimensional space. And these three points will always lie in the same plane. So the calculation of how a triangle might look like is quite easy. If you can render a triangle, then you can scale it up to any complex shape. But things are very different in ray tracing. You must have noticed that from the very first ray traced images, you have been seeing spheres, spheres and more spheres. Why? The reason is that ray tracing is quite different from traditional graphics. In ray tracing, you are modeling reality. Light rays are actually hitting an object like a sphere. So the intersection of a sphere and a line or a ray is quite easy to calculate. And that's the reason why we use more of spheres. We have been talking a lot about spheres and rays without actually introducing them properly. Let's start with ray, shall we? No, not that one. Introducing the ray, lesser known cousin of the well-known line. While you will typically define a line using two points, a ray is defined by a point and a direction. Hence, it is also called a half line. This makes ray perfect to play the role of light in physics. Light often starts from a point and moves in one direction, unlike a line which can move in two directions. This is the formula of a ray. Ray of t equals ray's origin plus ray's direction multiplied by t, where the direction is normalized. Introducing a sphere, the most well-rounded among Euclidean solids. Take any point on the surface of a sphere and you can tell how far it is from the center. Just say the radius. Spheres are surprisingly versatile. You can use them in the foreground, background, or even as the flow. Formula of a sphere, x minus c whole square equals r square, where c is the center and r is the radius. How do we know when and where a ray will hit a sphere? A little knowledge of mathematics will help us here. So you will be given ready to use formulas in your sub problem. If you are interested in knowing how we arrived at those formulas, then we will give you links in the video description. So let's start and render some 3D spheres. Okay, so let's start with sub problem number three, how to make 3D balls appear in 2D space, or in other words, rendering 3D images. The requirement is to render a 3D red ball into an image without shading. Without shading means it will look flat. It will not have the subtleties uh, that makes it look like a 3D ball. It will more look like a red circle in the middle of a black space. But we will get to that. We will make it uh, uh, the shading part comes later. Unlike in other problems, you need to know certain concepts before you go forward. The ray tracing algorithm is quite complex and recursive, but for our sub problem, we are trying to make it in a simplified fashion. We need to first the step one, we will shoot a ray towards each pixel. We will find the nearest object hit by the ray in that scene. And if an object is hit, 
then we need to find the color at the surface of that object where it's getting hit at the hit position. If it's not getting hit, then it just goes straight through. We'll assume that it's a black color, empty space. If you imagine a ray hitting a sphere and it actually going through the sphere, there are two, three different cases. In the first case, the ray hits the sphere, goes through the sphere and comes out of it. So it's actually hitting at two points at the surface of the sphere. In the second case that's shown by ray 2, the ray just glides through the sphere and just hits it at one point. Imagine it's a tangent to a circle. It's just touching one single point and that's the intersection between the sphere and the ray. And the third case is that the ray doesn't touch the sphere at all. It just uh, misses the sphere. Now in these cases, before we discuss, we're going to define something called sphere to ray. So sphere to ray, imagine it as a variable, which is a difference from the origin of a ray, which is the point where the ray originates and the uh, center of the sphere. So the difference is calculated and we store it as sphere to ray. This is important because this will come in a formula later. When we are trying to find the intersection between a sphere and a ray, we need to calculate a, B and C and from A, B and C we are going to calculate the, dis, uh, the main determining variable which is called the discriminant. So A is always 1 in this formula. We will not go into the details of how this A, B, C is derived but for the purpose of implementing this problem we are just going to talk about how the formula is applied. So if A is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 into the right direction of the ray dot product sphere to ray and c is sphere to ray dot product with sphere with itself so sphere to ray dot product sphere to ray subtracted from the center of the sphere square so that is how we calculate c now we have a b and c and the discriminant is calculated as b square minus 4 a c so if A is 1, you can eliminate A from this formula. So uh, in, in, in the actual implementation, you will not see A. It will be ignored because A is assumed to be 1. Now what is the importance of the discriminant? Remember the three cases. So if discriminant is more than 0, it intersects at two different points. If the discriminant is 0, that means that it just intersected at this one point that is case 2. And if discriminant is less than zero, it did not intersect, which is case three, which was our case three. Now the distance to the point of intersection from the origin is calculated as distance equal to minus B plus or minus square root of discriminant divided by 2A. Now we are not going to calculate the actual formula is plus or minus, but we are not going to calculate the plus case. We are going to assume minus because uh, if you remember the camera is always sitting in negative x and we are looking at the scene in positive x so we are uh, uh, making some uh, assumptions here and we are just looking at the closest distance so we are going to replace plus or minus with just minus and if the distance turns out to be negative we will ignore that distance we will assume as if the sphere did not hit the sphere so the ray did not hit the sphere so now, uh, what is the importance of this? So if we know how far the ray traveled before it hit the sphere, we can actually calculate the hit position. So this is why the distance is important. We calculate the distance and then we calculate the position uh, where the ray hits the sphere. So the equation of a ray, if you remember, is ray of t equals ray of the origin plus ray direction into t. Now we are going to replace t with the distance to get the hit position. So the hit position is equal to the origin of the ray plus the direction of the ray multiplied by the distance. So if you calculate this, you should get a value which is a vector value and that vector value should tell you precisely, precisely where the position is. Now comes the most important part like we are calculating the position to find out what would uh, first of all which sphere it hit and if it is a red sphere the color of 
that's that hit position should be red if it is a green sphere it's the color of that position should be green and so on so we are going to use uh, the hit position to calculate what is the color at that surface and since we are only dealing with flat surfaces flatly colored no shading we are just going to use a plain color for this one another important but often ignored uh, aspect um, is the aspect ratio so sometimes your rendered images might look squashed like uh, the top and bottom comes to closer together or it becomes stretched uh, the reason why this happens is because the aspect ratio was strongly calculated now uh, the reason uh, uh, this is done is uh, imagine your image or your um, your screen is uh, for for the purpose of an example uh, 320 pixels wide and 200 pixels high however uh, so this means your screen is rectangular in shape however your pixels are actually square in shape so uh, if you imagine uh, the logical space in which your scene is sitting in uh, it does not have to be the same dimensions as that of your screen in fact the logical uh, dimensions of your scene would usually be minus one to plus one uh, so this image uh, the center of your image would be the origin so uh, its x coordinate would be zero and the y coordinate would be zero and the uh, uh, x coordinate would range from negative one which is the left edge of the screen to positive one which is the right edge of the screen so if the x coordinate ranges from minus one to plus one the y coordinate should be shorter than my minus one to plus one because the screen is not perfect square it's a rectangular shape so how do we know exactly at what point we should chop off the uh, x y coordinates so that is calculated by using uh, so as i said y coordinate cannot range from minus one to plus one it has to be adjusted as you see in this image uh, the top half and the bottom half has to be removed so uh, the easy way to calculate this is uh, the straightforward way to calculate this is find the aspect ratio of your screen which is the width divided by height so if it was 320 by 200 the aspect ratio becomes 1.6 now the maximum of uh, the y the maximum of the y coordinate is the uh, reciprocal of this that's 1 by aspect ratio of this so 1 by 1.6 is calculated as uh, 0.625 so your y coordinate can go to positive 0.625 and then uh, smaller value should be minus 625 so keep this in mind when you're calculating uh, the range of values that x should range and y should range so x will range from minus 1 to plus 1 and y will range uh, depending on the aspect ratio it changes finally what you should render uh, I'm going to give you precise values so that uh, we should have the same end result now if you render a sphere uh, the requirement is that you need to render a sphere into a 320 by 200 uh, pixel image so 320 pixels wide 200 pixels high uh, this i think is the commodore 64 uh, resolution or the um, uh, uh, one of the sh smaller resolution we're keeping the image small so that uh, we don't have to spend a lot of time rendering it so if you make mistakes, we can uh, you know run the program quickly and find out the results. So let's keep the uh, resolution small. Uh, the camera position uh, is assumed to be x uh, zero, y zero, and z minus one. So it's sitting a little behind uh, the origin. The ball position and radius is zero zero zero, and uh, the radius is 0.5. So the ball is sitting exactly at the origin, and the camera is looking behind. Uh, little towards you so that you uh, it's almost like you're looking at the uh, ball and the ball's radius is 0 0.5 so imagine uh, the, the the screen was minus one to po uh, positive one so the screen it's almost uh, covering half the screen and the color of the ball is given in hexadecimal form this is the common format you would see in web design so it is ff0000 and uh, uh, if you have all these uh, specifications, you should be able to um, render your image. As before, I would recommend you to try this yourself. Uh, you can pause 
the video right now and uh, try it yourself and come back and see how I do the solution. Welcome back. Now let's start from where we stopped in our last uh, sub problem. Uh, straight away I'm going to change this to 320 and 200. I would like this, I'd like to rem remove everything which is after that. I'm just going to keep this, I'm going to change this to image test.ppm. So let's assume a couple of things here. Let's assume that we already have uh, uh, say things like the camera uh, defined. So we already know that the camera will be in vector position 0, 0, minus 1. Um, we have not imported vector. So let's do that from vector import vector. So don't worry about a uh, lot of the imports here because we'll not be we'll not have implemented many of the imports but at the high level we need to know what what classes we need so uh, next is objects these objects will go into our scene so i'm assuming that there's a sphere and uh, it has a center at the origin uh, so i'm going to use a class called point we'll define that as vector only uh, just calling it point makes it clearer uh, the sphere has a radius of 0.5 uh, color will be defined uh, ideally uh, currently we can only do one zero zero like this uh, to define red but uh, we'll fix that uh, we'll change it we'll create some new helper function called from hex uh, and use hexadecimal uh, which is way more convenient than defining uh, them using vectors and uh, i can use that as a string and as you can see my editor automatically detects that it's hexadecimal uh, color information and renders it in that particular color which is a pretty nice nice feature of emacs uh, i'm not sure which minor mode it is i'll probably mention it as a uh, as a subtitle uh, next we, sh we shall define the scene the scene will have all the information uh, to render the scene uh, so we need the camera the objects the uh, width and the height so we have a scene defined uh, let's assume that rendering is performed by a rendering engine so we'll call it render engine uh, we have not defined any of these classes but we'll do that in a minute and then uh, i think we are good we have uh, rendered the uh, uh, we have not rendered the scene so uh, that's where the image comes in image is uh, engine uh, render and you pass the scene so uh, we have a lot of classes to define here uh, we have defined image image is going to be written so we don't really need to import image and uh, we are good so let's start with some of the easy stuff first uh, i'm going to uh, start with the color so color we already have a class uh, called color.py uh, it was empty uh, i'm just going to add a doc string it's always a good practice to add a doc string to a class so i'm going to say stores color as rgb triplets and alias for vector and uh, i think we are good now i'm going to uh, define a, a class method called um, from hex and it should take the class and the hex color I'm going to uh, give it a default hex color of black uh, I think probably one more I'm going to define it as a class method using the class method decorator uh, why am I calling it a class method because uh, it's it's if you think about it Python does not have multiple kinds of constructors uh, like for instance C++ uh, where you can do some sort of a polymorphism that you can pass strings you can pass uh, triplets or tuples of integers or three arguments of integers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a class method you should call it as color dot 
uh, from hex rather than an instance of color like c dot from hex and uh, pass it a hex color. Uh, it's not very difficult to calculate uh, our vector class constructor from this hexadecimal string. All you have to do is extract the relevant parts of the string. So for instance, x will be uh, uh, hex color one to three uh, because the first zero is uh, already taken by that hash character uh, which is a standard notation so i don't want to remove that even if it's not there it will work but uh, let's keep that and to convert this into hexadecimal so i'm just gonna say int of 16 so this converts uh, whatever string is there like zero zero uh, it interprets that as a hexadecimal and converts it into a value now we need to take this value and divide it by uh, so this will be a value between 0 to 255 we need to divide it by 255 so that it becomes a value from 0 to 1 so let's do that 255.0 so that we'll always get the floating point results now with this uh, we can replicate this for y and z so y should be uh, from the position 3 to 5 if i'm not wrong and z should be from the position 5 to 7 so that takes care of x y and z so we can return uh, an instance of this class by passing x y and z so uh, we have defined the color information uh, in the form of a class uh, method now let's define an another easy class the point which i'm using here uh, it's nothing but uh, like we defined uh, colors uh, it's going to be class so i'm going to import vector from vector import vector and to define class point as uh, a subclass of vector and i'm going to put in a neat doc string which says that an alias uh, point stores the 3d coordinates for ordinates and alias for vector like we defined for the color and it's that's it so it's going to be an empty class and uh, we have defined point so that was easy uh, i'm just going to import point here from point import point and that point warning disappears so in case you notice that uh, the imports are getting rearranged i'm using uh, i think it's called i sort a minor mode for emacs which automatically sorts uh, uh, the imports alphabetically arranges them according to whether it's an external or built-in kind of an import takes care of uh, the imports uh, very neatly so i use that uh, next uh, what do we like to define so uh, we have defined uh, vector color uh, let's define sphere so let's start with uh, sphere dot pi and it's called uh, sphere um, so sphere is the only 3d shape implemented has radius just to be nice with documentation uh, center and material that sounds wrong uh, has center radius and material so let's do that let's define uh, a constructor which has center so let's mention self center radius and material and it should be self dot center equals center self dot radius let's 
radius self dot material equals material right uh, next comes the core uh, intersection algorithm so I'm going to call it intersects with a ray uh, we haven't defined a ray yet uh, but let's assume that a ray has uh, uh, an origin and a direction uh, I'm just gonna say that uh, what this uh, uh, function does using a doc string checks if the ray intersects this sphere returns distance to intersection or none if no intersection if there is no intersection all right and um, First thing we need to calculate is a equals one from the formula, but I'm going to comment that out because like I said, uh, it's not required. B equal to two into ray dot direction dot product sphere to ray. So we have to calculate sphere to ray first to sphere to ray is ray dot origin minus self dot center so we have calculated sphere to ray now uh, we have the dot product okay i think there's a typo there dot product there as well and um, we need to calculate c next so c is defined as sphere to ray dot dot product of sphere to ray uh, minus self dot radius into self dot radius just not using a square if you can multiply it directly uh, discriminant discriminant equals b into b minus 4 into c no a here again if discriminant greater than or equal to 0 then distance is negative b minus square root of discriminant the whole divided by 40 by 2 sorry and if distance is more than 0 can return in the distance or else we have a catch all return statement which is return none So we have not defined square root yet. So that's inside math from math import square root. Yep. So um, looks okay to me. Good. So now let's define um, the ray. Uh, we have import. Let's import the sphere from sphere import sphere. Uh, from let's create ray dot pi um, the class ray can be simply defined as uh, with, a cons uh, with a doc string like ray is a half line with an origin and a normalized direction okay um, let's create a constructor 
uh, I want the origin and direction and self dot origin equals origin self dot direction equals direction dot normalize so remember we have to normalize array in the constructor itself so the ray is done uh, what's next uh, we need a scene so let's define a scene dot by a scene is just a container so uh, we'll define it as uh, scene has all the information needed to or needed for the ray tracing engine so uh, let's see uh, in the constructor what all we need to pass to the scene uh, we need to pass the uh, camera the uh, objects the width and the height that's all and uh, it's very straightforward self dot camera equals camera self dot objects equals objects self dot width equals width and self dot height equals height so that's done let's mention that here from scene import scene save that right now what's remaining is the engine which is the most complex part so let's open engine.py and to create a class called render engine uh, the function of a render engine is it renders 3d objects into 2d objects using ray tracing okay so uh, the main function is called render and you pass a scene itself. and um, let's extract the width and the height as local variables width equals scene dot width and height equals height equals scene dot height and now calculating the aspect ratio need underscore there equals float of width divided by height so that we get the floating point results uh, in Python 2 as well uh, we'll know why this is important uh, in normal Python it will calculate floating point but if it is uh, early versions of uh, Python 2 series it, it needs to have that float but it makes no difference in Python 3 so let's keep that uh, we're going to define the leftmost uh, extreme of x uh, coordinates as x0 and we know that it's going to be negative 1 negative 1 1.0 x1 will be positive uh, 1.0 just for symmetry we'll just put that positive sign it's not really required uh, we need to calculate how much we need to move uh, in x coordinate space at each step uh, of calculating the pixel so we call that x step um, in maths we call it the delta uh, so let's calculate that as x1 minus x0 divided by the width minus 1 now this width minus 1 is important because the width is 320 and actually the maximum value is just uh, 319 um, so the number of steps is calculated based on uh, 319 
so uh, width has to be subtracted by one let's do the same thing for y or i'll type it out y zero equals uh, negative point zero divided point one point zero divided by the aspect ratio right so now we have y zero y one would be exactly same except for the positive sign and then y step will be calculated as y1 minus y0 divided by height minus 1 inside brackets right so uh, we have uh, calculated the aspect ratio related thing so i'll read a, leave a line uh, and calculate um, the uh, local va variables again extracted from scene as scene dot camera and uh, the pixels uh, before we loop to the pixels i want the image like a blank canvas to be created with width and height from image import image uh, what do we need what else we need to import I think that's okay now let's uh, scan through pixel by pixel uh, and create rays passing through each pixel so for J in range height We're calculating the y coordinate as a, uh, from y0 to j multiplied by y step. So this makes um, uh, this gives us the y coordinate. Now next is the x coordinate for i in range, very symmetric uh, width. Uh, x is also calculated in the same fashion. X0 plus i into x step um, good sign in a, a graphics program algorithm is when the symmetry between the way x and y is calculated that usually tells you uh, that you're doing it in a right way or implemented it in the right way um, i need to calculate the ray now ray equals ray of camera because the ray starts from the camera or your eye position and point x comma y minus camera so we are avoiding the use of uh, the word uh, the the vector class we are mostly using point class because point is more logically uh, easier to read and you know understand that we are referring to a point here so now we have calculated the ray we are assuming that something will uh, do the ray tracing and give us the result and we'll put that in, in the pixel so uh, let's let's assume that and uh, calculate pixels dot set pixel i comma j uh, self dot ray trace self dot ray trace ray comma c um, and return pixels in the end so for completeness we need to import ray and point so from ray import ray from point import point this warning should disappear next let's define ray trace since we have passed a ray and a scene let's mention that so color would be calculated at the end of this so let's give it an initial value of zero color of zero 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 and then um, we're going to find the nearest object hit by uh, so let's mention that find the nearest 
object it by the array in the scene. Um, now I'm going to delegate this to yet another function. So let's call it find nearest and uh, pass the ray and the scene. Now this function should return us not only the uh, distance, um, how far it was, uh, the intersection is, it should also give us which object was hit. So I'm going to take two return values from this, the distance hit and the object hit. Um, the reason is if the object hit is nothing, uh, that way I know that there is uh, no color information to be calculated or no need to calculate the hit position and the color etc. So let's check that first itself. If object hit is none, return whatever color we have calculated so far. On the other hand, if we are proceeding, let's calculate the hit position. Hit position, uh, like we said in the ray formula, it's ray origin plus ray direction multiplied by the distance hit. That should give you the hit position. Next is what is the color at the position it hit. So that's what I'm going to calculate. Color is going to be incremented or added to the existing color. Uh, this form of accumulating the color will be important when we're doing a proper recursive algorithm of ray tracing. Uh, for now, it's just going to add to uh, black, so it makes not much of a difference just assigning it. But um, in, in future, uh, accumulating the color will be more important. Self.color at Again, uh, this is uh, yet to be defined so it's the color which is calculated at the hit position so we have to back calculate what is the object hit uh, the hit position and the scene uh, we have to import color from color import color Next, we have to define the two missing functions, find nearest and uh, color at. So let's define find nearest. Uh, it needs a ray and the scene. So uh, we need to go object by object. Um, so uh, whichever uh, object we get, we need to calculate the intersection, the distance uh, from uh, the origin of the ray to that point uh, to that position whichever distance is the smallest will win it's kind of like finding the smallest item in a list so let's define the initial values for the smallest distance so dist minimum equals none so same enough value you can probably mention zero uh, but i prefer none the first the object finally being hit which is being returned is also none. So these two are the return values that we need. So now, like I said, we need to go through every object in the scene. Let's calculate the distance where the object is getting intersected. And uh, like I mentioned, if this distance is not none, like uh, we calculated uh, for the sphere, uh, if the sphere is not getting intersected by the ray, it returns none. So that's what we have to check here is not none. Uh, note that I'm not calculating not equal to none. Uh, is not none is the preferred way when you're dealing with uh, comparisons involving none. Uh, is none, is not none is what is recommended rather than equal to none and not equal to none. Uh, one more uh, uh, one more thing we have to check is whether the object hit is none. Uh, 
and uh, the distance is less than the minimum distance so uh, this uh, is like an additional conditional check that we have to do you can write as an another if statement but i'm going to use an and operator here so object hit is done or distance is less than distance min then we know that we have found the uh, minimum new uh, candidate for the minimum distance so distance minimum will be updated to the distance and the object hit will be updated to the current object now uh, let's return first the distance and then the hit object object hit uh, looks good uh, finally we had to define color at What do we need here? So let's just copy that. And then um, the good thing about this stage of the problem is that we don't need to calculate the color. We just need to return the color uh, if we know what it hit. So I'm just going to return object hit dot material material is at this point defined as the color itself so um, we should be good in terms of the render engine i don't see any uh, warning so i'm going to close that i'm going to import from engine import render engine so now we have almost all the code written um, let's try it out by running it on the shell i'm just going to call it as uh, python main.py okay so it looks like the sphere's color was defined outside we can call make that as the third argument close that define the sphere So let's go back to the engine and see what the problem is. So the ray tracing part returns color. Okay, there is no return color over here. I'll quickly add that. Let's go back to the shell. Okay, looks like we have a return value and it's called test.ppm. And as you can see, we have rendered a red circle, which is a red 3D ball. So congratulations, we have rendered our first 3D image. Hope you're enjoying my videos. Show your appreciation by hitting like, share and subscribe. Thank you.